Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to present our results. The aim of this study was to determine the potential use of ECG gated CT in the diagnostic workup of patients with aortic prosthetic valve endocarditis. Transesophageal echocardiography is a recommended imaging modality in patients with PVE. However, the sensitivity of TE is lower than in native valve endocarditis. And this suggests that other diagnostic modalities may be valuable. Between April 2008 and June 2011, all patients with aortic PVE in the western region of Sweden were studied. Since the abstract was submitted, uh, five new patients have been added, increasing the number to 27. All patients underwent TE and 64 slice ECG gated CT, and the readers were blinded to the results of the other exam. 16 patients had surgery. The thickness of the aortic root wall was evaluated, where a thickened wall is known from TE as an early sign of aortic root infection. We studied the presence of abscesses, pseudoaneurysms, defined as abscesses that are drained into the aorta or the left ventricle, vegetations, and signs of valvular dehiscence. A thickened aortic wall was found both with CT and TE in 17 patients, and both exams were negative in eight patients. CT detected a thickened wall in additionally two patients not detected with TE. 15 patients had a pseudoaneurysm detected both with CT and TE, and both exams were negative in eight patients. TE detected one abscess not found with CT, while CT, on the other hand, found three pseudoaneurysms not detected with TE. The strength of agreement calculated with Kappa statistics was classified as very good for thickened aortic wall and good for abscess pseudoaneurysm. This shows the abscess that was detected only with TE. The TE image to the right shows a small abscess cavity in the aortic wall marked with an asterisk. The CT image to the left shows a thickened aortic wall indicating infection, but the abscess cavity couldn't be detected. This shows one of the three pseudoaneurysms detected only with CT. The CT image shows a pseudoaneurysm situated anteriorly, close to the right coronary cusp, marked with PS. The TE image shows how the mechanical valve prosthesis gives rise to acoustic shadowing anteriorly, that is, down in the TE picture, and the pseudoaneurysm cannot be detected. TE found more vegetations than CT, and TE was also better in detecting valvular dehiscence, which is expected since TE has the advantage of visualizing blood flow. Sixteen patients were operated, and the agreement between imaging findings, that is abscesses, veg vegetation, and dehiscence, and surgical findings, was good when comparing each modality individually with surgery, and when combining the findings of CT and TE, the agreement with surgery improved. The only two imaging findings that were not confirmed at surgery were vegetations in two patients, seen both with CT and TE. Whereas six surg uh, surgical findings eluded detection with CT, and three with TE, only one surgical finding was not detected when combining the findings of CT and TE. Twelve patients had indication for preoperative coronary angiography, and the CT study provided a conclusive CT angiogram in all cases, and no patient underwent invasive coronary angiography. 
So what can CT add in patients with PVE? It may provide additional diagnostic information and detect signs of infection that are not seen with TE. It may have the potential to replace invasive coronary angiography and can aid preoperative planning also by describing the coronary artery anatomy and the course of bypass grafts. The CT procedure is operator independent in contrast to TE and can be used as an alternative method if TE cannot be performed. Our conclusion is that ECG gated CT is a valuable complement to TE in the workup of patients with PVE. Dr. Siebe, can you discuss a paper? Yeah, thanks, Chairman. Um, thanks, that was a brilliant study. My name is Matthias Siebe from Freiburg in Germany. And thank you also for this uh, very well-written manuscript, which I received quite in advance. So uh, we learned that there is an additional value of the CT for these type of patients, um, which is a good thing to have another diagnostic tool. Um, and what I learned is that uh, we uh, will not get any additional value um, in order to see vegetations but we have an additional value in uh, order to uh, see the pseudoaneurysms or abscesses, but we have the greatest value of this new tool in order to prevent coronary angiograms in those type of patients. Um, my, qu my first question to you is, um, it's actually the same question as you did in uh, the slide before, what does it add for us as a surgeon? To be more specific, in how many patients did the surgeons change their plan because of the CT findings? And um, or in how many patients did they change their plan preoperatively or was it only um, changed intraoperatively? Um, the other question which I would like to uh, state is um, you had different pro procedures um, types and was the value of the CT independent of the procedures type. So is it um, as good in mechanical valves as in biologic? I see. The first question, uh, what CD can add for the surgeon, uh, in our study, the decision of to have surgery or not was not affected uh, directly. Would it, the study design was not in, in that way, but I think uh, the decision was not affected uh, but with, with adding the CT, but um, the planning of the, of the surgery was uh, uh, facilitated with information. For example, uh, in patients that were TE didn't see, find the pseudoaneurysm and uh, CT find the pseudoaneurysm, um, this could affect uh, the decision of uh, um, having surgery with a new valve or a uh, root replacement with a homograft. Mm -hmm. But the, the plan was sometimes, um, it was actually changed sometimes because you detected coronary lesions in some of the CTs as I, uh, yes, also as I read in your article uh, and yeah. uh, uh, you performed some, some additional procedures because of the lesions found in the CT. Yes, uh, regarding the coronary arteries we uh, found one significant stenosis in a left internal memory artery graft and uh, this was confirmed during surgery with the with, uh, measurement of the flow and uh, the patient had a new graft, a vein graft during the procedure. Mm -hmm. And this, all these patients, uh, no patient underwent invasive coronary angiography so we, uh, we haven't made that comparison but it was a uh, 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 if I can project in the future, we will rely on the CT results much more. Like, uh, likewise, in, for our Chavi patients, we had the same learning, learning curve that yes. we well, measured the annulus first in the CTs, and yes. now we re rely on the CTs because it's uh, so exact measurements of the annulus. I think, that I think the, the same will happen with yeah, this type. Okay. 
And for the uh, mechanical valves, do you see the, um, the prosthesis type? Is it as good as for biological? You mean if, if, uh, if CT is as good in the mechanical as in biological valves? Yeah. We haven't studied that, actually. It's a good question. Uh, the material includes both mechanical and biolo biological yeah. valves, so that, that is possible to okay. look at, actually. Good point. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, I have a question. Uh, one of the most difficult diagnoses uh, is uh, uh, an acute endocarditis after a few weeks from operation, um, which can be the, the additional advantage of the CT scan in this particular type of patient in which uh, mostly we, we don't really have abscess or uh, prosthesis malfunctioning. Uh, so do you see a real advantage in this special situation? Do you believe that uh, a CT PET can, on the contrary, be much more uh, helpful for this diagnosis or not? A problem in the early uh, post-operative period is that uh, there is a th uh, an increased thickness of the aortic wall, which, which is then normalized. So you cannot use that as a sign of infection uh, the first one or two months post-operatively. Um, in our material, we, we only had two two uh, infections in this early period, so we haven't really <coughs> much results of that. And about the, uh, the PET CT, do you think it can help more? I think it's the same situation with PET, that uh, in the early post-operative period, you, you, uh, I presume you will have a uh, uh, an increased activity in the area, also without an infection, because of the healing process. So I think this will be a problem. Just, uh, I have a comment concerning the PET scan. Actually, it was my question also. Uh, I think you did not perform the PET scan imaging for those patients. No. It was only CD-gated. No. So it's a useful tool to convince the surgeon to reoperate the patient especially without having the clinical symptoms, it's a difficult decision. And yes. if it's helping to us, it's good. But I think for those two patients, they hadn't got the infection and you operated actually on the basis of the image because surgically you had two patients had negative results. You showed us the correlation table. Yes. Surgically, two patients hadn't got the infection, but the infection or abscess diagnosed by T and CT, is it correct? We can go back to that picture. Those two patients. Those two patients had uh, uh, CT showed vegetations. Yep. And T showed vegetation, but during surgery, uh, no, no vegetations any. were found. But the patients had other signs of infection. Okay. Yes. And concerning PET scan, we have some limited. Um, informations, mainly for postoperative six months, PET scan is not really useful tool because there is a huge inflammatory activity and for early postoperative period, six months, it's not really useful tool to diagnose the infection. But after six months, it's very useful, especially when you have the difficulty without the symptoms on the patient and there is a sterile collection or infectious collection which you are not sure yeah. to differ this PET scan is really helping recently I operated a patient with the uh, mechanical valve endocarditis and our doubt was totally uh, replied by PET scan and the surgical uh, result also it was a big abscess not sterile collection so but for first six months it's difficult uh, the question from fourth microphone. Yeah, thank you, Ma Florian Wagner from Hamburg, Germany. Um, if I understood you correctly, initially you said you had 27 patients, yes, but only 16 underwent surgery. Yes. Now I was wondering, in those 11 that you obviously decided not to go ahead with surgery, was which kind of tool was the most helpful for you to find out that you shouldn't do surgery? Because usually one would expect a prosthetic valve endocarditis will not heal ultimately without surgery. 
Yes. And so it's a very low percentage, in my opinion, that you had only two-thirds of the patients where you had the suspicion been taken to the OR. And was CT a main key factor to decide not to go for surgery? Was it helpful? Because it's like here a little bit confusing with the numbers. Yes. I will show you a picture of this. Uh, sorry. Here. Uh, it may seem low that only 16 patients were operated, but we included, from the beginning in the study, we included all patients with PV, also those that normally maybe are not uh, admitted to thoracic surgery department. Uh, five patients had prohibitive surgical risk and were considered too ill, and uh, three of these have died. Five patients had no indication for surgery, according to the guidelines from the European Society of Cardiology and uh, they are all still alive. One pi patient died uh, during the workup for emergency surgery, and one patient has a chronic infection and uh, is scheduled for surgery. <laughs>